How are we doing today, guys? It's Jesse with the Common Man Corpus Christi, bringing you news and politics through a common sense lens. And I have some news to report on the terrorist attack that happened yesterday in New York City on a subway where there was gas released, there was many shots fired off, and quite a few people injured. As of right now, no one is dead, thank the Lord. But many people are injured and we're all afraid that at some point the details behind this suspect are going to be hidden or covered up because of his background and what we've found out about him so far. So that's what we're going to do here right now. And I'm going to give you a fair warning right now. This video is probably going to be a little long because I want to make sure all of this is documented, not only so that way you can share this with your friends, share the truth about this individual and about the cancer that is currently metastasizing in the United States that is black nationalism and black supremacy. We need to talk about that. It needs to be known. It can't be ignored any longer because this is at least the third, ta third attack in a very recent time all linked back to black nationalism. This is something we need to be aware of. Racism in any form is never acceptable. It does not matter what the person doing it looks like. It is wrong no matter what. We have to document this and we have to call it out and we have to accept that it comes from all people of all shades and all sides so that way we can call it out when it is happening and expel this Pur and purge this evil from our society once and for all. But at the end of the day, just remember, you still live in the ra least racist country on the planet by every metric. So don't let this of these bad things get you down too much. We're here to document and make sure that no one ever forgets what's really going on and that we can spread the truth. So, we're going to go ahead and get into all of this real quick. So we're going to go over Andy No and his information that he's got on this because he's got a lot of really good information on the background of this man, Frank James. Um, but before we get into all of that, I want to remind everybody why this story matters because of the people that got injured and hurt in the process of all of this. And this young man here was one of those victims. And TheBlaze.com did a really good job of telling his story along with some information from CNN and the interviews they found for him. So this is something we're going to go over and then we'll jump back into the monster who did this and his background and potentially some of his motivations behind all of that. So here we go. Man who sat next to Brooklyn subway shooter recounts moments before and after smoke bomb went off and gunfire erupted. Loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I can only imagine being inside of a subway with the sounds and the echoing of a gunshot going off. A man who was reportedly sitting next to the Brooklyn subway shooter moments before he unleashed violence and chaos on the train car offered a first-hand glimpse of the harrowing experience during an interview Tuesday. From his hospital bed, 27-year-old Horari Binkata told CNN's John Berman that he was just on his way to work, minding his own business when he hopped on the N train shortly before 8.30 a.m. that morning. He sat down next to a man wearing a gas mask in what appeared to be a Metropolitan Transport Transportation Authority get-up. Suddenly, a smoke bomb went off and black smoke filled the car. Then dozens of gunshots rang out and occupants scrambled hysterically. The gunshots hit at least 10 passengers. Bincato was one of them. A bullet entered through the back of his knee before grazing his kneecap and exiting the other side. This makes me want to never ride a train again in my life, Bincato said, shaking. I don't even know how I'm holding my phone right now. All you see is black smoke after the smoke bomb went off. People bum rushing to the back, he recalled. About 10 shots went off. I think the gun jammed. I think he had an extended clip or something because I never heard that many shots come off a handgun. It sounded like the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. Bencato reportedly, a housekeeping manager at the New York Hotel, at the New Yorker Hotel, said that the shooting started, he heard a pregnant woman screaming for help, so he hugged her to shield her from the gunfire. There was a pregnant woman. She said, I'm pregnant with a baby. I hugged her, he added. The bum rush continued. I got pushed, and that's when I got shot in the back end of my knee. According to Bincata, the shooting went on for at least a minute before passengers were able to break the train car doors open and flee into the station. He noted the gun appeared jammed, which may have prevented further bloodshed. Bloodshed. This has since been corroborated by the investigators. God's little blessings. The survivor said he was not paying attention prior to the attack and thus did not get a good look at the suspect. 
I just had my headphones in my ear, my phone in my hand, and my mind and minding my business, my head down, head down, sitting down. New York City police identified a person of interest on Tuesday, 62-year-old Frank James of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Keys and a credit card recovered at the crime scene were connected to a U-Haul cargo van recently rented by James. A manhunt for James is underway. As of the time of this recording, James has been picked up, picked up by the New York Police Department as a as the prime suspect in this shooting. So that's what we know as of right now for his status. I'm sure that'll be updated more to come as soon as things go, but it looks like they've got the guy. Authorities described James as a troubled man who expressed disdain for New York City Mayor Eric Adams and had begun a pulp-loading bizarre and threat-filled rants to YouTube. Other witnesses claimed they saw the suspect mumbling to himself on the train before carrying out the acts of violence. Despite 10 being shot and at least a dozen more heading to hospitals for other treatment, somehow none of the victims of the attack sustained life-threatening injuries. Praise Jesus. Pincada is reportedly expected to recover and to be able to walk again after spending a few weeks on crutches. But he said the pain from the injury is worst he's ever experienced. I didn't think it was serious till I got out of the train and I pulled my pants down and that's when I saw the blood gushing out. So good on this guy for doing the right thing. I'm glad he's going to recover. Glad to see that he is doing much better now and it seems like he will walk again, which is awesome. That's exactly what we want to see. And like I said before, the individual um, Frank James has been picked up. This is video of the cops taking him in over there on Twitter. Um, Andy No has been covering this really well. He is good about this kind of stuff. He is really good with social media and all of that. So I highly recommend you go follow him on social media anywhere you can because this guy is one of the best out there doing on-the-ground reporting and really digging into what's going on in reality world and not the fiction the mainstream media likes to send people out. And he was one of the first on the ground in Portland covering everything that happened with Antifa. The guy has been beat up multiple times for his craft. He is passionate about covering these people because he believes the truth needs to be out there. These people are monsters and they are a threat to society. And he is one of the few that are on the wall watching things out. One of the watchers on the wall sounding the alarm. And you must listen to him because this guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to this kind of crime. So, like I said, make sure you give him a follow on any kind of social media that you can find him on for as long as all of it lasts. Like I said, that's one of the reasons why we're documenting this. Because when I, after I load this to YouTube and I'm going to upload it to Rumble, I will also have a hard copy of this left on my computer that I will not get rid of. So this kind of stuff cannot be taken away from us. It cannot be destroyed. We will have documentation of all of this no matter what. And you'll be able to easily share this out with your friends. So if you can't already tell, this is probably going to be a little bit of a long video. So please, if you need to take a pause, go to the bathroom, get you something to drink and sit down because we're going to go over the background of this alleged monster that was responsible for the Brooklyn mass shooting. All right, so here we go. Andy knows Twitter thread on what he was able to find. One of the things that's really amazing about Andy is how good and how fast he is about burning through people's social media accounts and finding all of their information, whether it be YouTube, whether it be uh, obviously Twitter, Facebook, any of that kind of stuff. Andy pulls this stuff off. So here we go. All right, breaking. NYPD named Frank James as a person of interest in the Brooklyn mass shooting. I looked into his social media. Like the Waukesha, Waukesha, sorry, those towns in Wisconsin, Waukesha suspect and the Louisville Black Lives Matter activist who allegedly tried to assassinate a mayoral candidate, he appeared to be a fan of black nationalism. Now, if you remember, the Waukesha was the guy in the SUV who drove intentionally down through the middle of an active parade and was swerving to hit people, also had very obvious black nationalist ideology on his social media, just like this guy does. So, hydration check. Let's get into all of this. So as you can see, this is some of the pictures. Black Lives Matter, typical kind of stuff. Um, this right here is from the Liberation, the Black Liberation Army, if you don't know who they are. Basically think like the black version of neo-Nazis. They are all a bunch of racist monsters, um, messenger of Allah. A lot of that has ties back to like the Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam stuff, which is also very much a black supremacist group. Think, um... What was it? Uh, Franken? What was his name? President Obama's one that he... I'll remember it before the end of this video. But President Obama's pastor was a lot of that. Uh, Jeremiah Wright. See? Even got it faster than that. Reverend Jeremiah Wright was also is also a black supremacist and teaches black supremacist stuff in his church. 
So, okay, so this is some of the stuff. These are some uh, pictures this guy posted. Um, I think I will kill you last, which is this one. Um, let's pull these up real quick and see if we can browse through them and see what they are. That way we can get a full documentation of, of the full picture and not just what Andy's showing us. All right, please don't make reprove it is what the title was. He says, uh, the picture says, they say the pen is mightier than the sword. I say the bullet is mightier than both of them. And like I said, he says, please don't make me prove it on there. Um, and that was actually a memory he was sharing from, uh, that was a post he made in 2017. Ooh, that's particular. What's that look like? Hmm. Scratching his head considering the uh, smoke bombs that went off. Um, and that's the one he said. Now, that's just a meme. That one could not be much. But at the same time, um, oh, at the same time, it's one of those things that given context of everything else he's posted, you know, well, you know, take it as you will. Um, this one's from the Black Star Press. Look them up. I bet you they're not wonderful people. Angela Yvonne Davis is an American political activist, academic, and author. She emerged as a prominent counterculture activist and a radical in the 1960s as a leader of surprise, the Communist Party USA. All of this ties back to Marxism. I really do believe it is straight from the devil and is nothing but evil incarnate in an ideological governmental form. Um, NYP deleted this tweet Tuesday morning. Anyone with information on this whereabouts is asked to call. Oh, I wonder why they deleted that. Um, here we go. This is some more quotes from his social media. Of all things, remember this. Every mother effer respects a gunshot wound. Some more social media posts by Frank James, the pert NYPD suspect of interest. He posted hatred of Trump and appeared to sort, uh, support black nationalism and Black Lives Matter. So let's go ahead and look at these pictures. So we know what we have here. Okay, yeah, that's real happy and positive. How wonderful. Oh, and it's in one of his profile pictures. Wow, he was... He wanted to make sure everybody saw that first thing about him, huh? Come on, pictures change, change, change. There we go. If you say you like Trump because he speaks what's on his mind, the rest of us know that's code for I like him because he's a effing racist. And yeah, yeah, typical uh, stuff from the other side. Everybody who liked Trump was a racist because God forbid you just liked lower taxes. Of all things, remember this every, yeah, okay, respects a gun. Yeah, we read that one off of Andy's stuff earlier. Let's see if we can get this last one to load up. You may not be able to beat him, but you can sure as hell shoot him. Yeah, yeah this is a real stable, wonderful person, wonderful functioning member of society. You know, why is it all of these guys seem to have such m amazing mental issues? I think that makes them easier to subject to this cult mentality. It's time for action. For years, Frank James, the person of interest in the Brooklyn mass shooting, has made references to shooting and killing people on his Facebook. So I think it's one of those things... I don't think we're going to pull up everything. Yeah, nothing says F you better than some of these. It's a picture of bullets, lots of skulls. Uh, everybody that wants to put me in my place. Yeah, your place. So, yeah, lots of threatening violence. Um, Frank James, the person interested in the Brooklyn subway mass shooting, has many videos on YouTube discussing his militant black national views. He recently expressed his appointment that Justice Jackson Kentani Brown is married to a white man. Okay, we're going to look at this. Hopefully it doesn't screw up my encoding stuff too bad. But once again, in case anything happens, I want this stuff documented. So we're going to play this so you can hear the words straight out of his mouth. Here we go. I had no idea with that African name that she would be married to a white man. One of my subscribers brought that to my attention. Yeah. I'm going to pause this in case he says something bad. Our black bad. sister, Supreme Court Justice, power to the people, is married to a fucking white man. Let me see this fucking picture. I don't believe this shit. Oh, God. Wait a minute. I hope he's actually just being dramatic. This is the motherfucker right there. There he is. There he is right there. I don't know. White man. Black sister. Kentante Tay. What the fuck her name Married to a white man. I had no idea with that African name. So, yeah, that I definitely know people that are like that, that have severe issues with that kind of thing. And I will never understand it as if anybody, anybody that knows me on a personal level or has watched my videos the entire way through knows. I come from a mixed race family. I'm half Mexican. My little sister's half black. My little brother's a quarter Korean. And my little sister's 100% white white like wisconsin white okay so yeah i always thought that was the dumbest thing in the world i used to always think that by the time 
I don't know, in another 30 or 40 years, racism wouldn't even be a thing. Nobody would even talk about it because we'd all just be different shades because we'd all be so mixed in that none of us cared about any of that stuff anymore. So here's another stuff. Um, oh, black Jesus, please kill all the whiteies. Frank James person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also posted a prayer asking for whites to die. One of his videos is titled, Once We Were Kings. And now anybody that knows about where that kind of information comes from, a lot of that also stems from like the Nation of Islam and all of that kind of stuff. Um, the whole Once We Were Kings idea that they're actually the lost tribe of Israel, that they're the real Jews. Um, it's a lot of stuff that they talk about um, that are just not historically accurate in any way, shape, or form. And it's basically just something to make themselves feel more like victims because they think they've lost everything. So, hold on a sec. Yeah, there we go. We once were kings. There's that one. And then, yeah, here's the one. So, yeah, here's the one, exact one he was talking about. And, of course, a picture of the absolutely lovely, isn't she gorgeous, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Obama. Oh, yeah. Super, super, super nice looking lady. So let's just keep on going down through the rest of these. I don't think we'll highlight. We don't have to highlight all of them. I think we've pretty much kind of proven our point. Frank James, the person of interest in the Brooklyn subway, yeah, da, 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 uh, number, made a number of pro-communist and pro-Fidel Castro posts in the past. His most recent posts and videos have put, vivided obsessively to black national interests. So obviously, yeah, pictures and quotes from Fidel Castro. Um, one of the videos posted on Facebook belonging to Frank James is entitled C-I-L-L -L Whitey. Frank James talked about a race war in many of his videos. He appeared to believe that blacks could not prosper among whites. White se black separatists. I hate that shit. We all are children of God, guys. We got to figure out how to get along. Frank James, the one... Yeah, 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 okay. Um, he, a Twitter account where he posted support for black nationalist groups of Nation of Islam. He also shared video of Tariq Nahashid. So you can see that right here, Proof of Doom, Frank 1544, so same thing. Uh, Farrah Khan tells the truth about who is the true leader of the Nation of Islam. Yeah, we're not going to go through all of that because, we, like I said, I think we've already proven our point. Um, this was a video of him walking around um, the actual street, I guess. Just for documentation purposes, we'll look at this video real quick. Um, I think we've kind of proven the point on all of this to anybody that's watching this. So, But, like I said, I want to... Yeah, fuck you this. too! You see that shit all day, every day. You know, you see that shit all day, every day. White motherfucker gonna slam the door, like, you know, try to slam, like, slam it in my face. Yeah, fuck you and your white ass too, you white mother, racist motherfucker. Like who? They had to put that in for good luck. I don't get, listen. Yeah, what? white racist motherfuckers, yeah, they do exist. They do fucking exist. Look at me, mother in the in just in the darkest corners of your mind bubba like uh, but like i mean what kind of person walks down the street and they hate your guts too just saying shit just like that fucking piece of things. shit and the ones accusing of being racist are always the racist that was clearly a racist comment about asian people all right i'm i'm done watching his videos this is bullshit i mean it it it's obvious this guy is a piece of shit and did this because of hate. Absolute hate. And of course, of course, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I wanted to document this. Because of course the censorship has already happened. YouTube has quickly removed the main channel for Frank James, the wanted suspect in the... Yeah, he posted many videos over the years expressing black nationalism and anti-white views. His other channels are still up and should be analyzed. Which I'm sure a lot of people have done. So I think that's... I think that kind of proves the point of everything I've said. Um, obviously, this guy is a black nationalist, has black nationalist views, and probably did this out of a hate for other races. And obviously, he doesn't just hate white people. He hates all races. And like a lot of his stuff has said, this guy does not believe the races should mix. This is the definition of racism. If you exchanged white for black in any of this, you would be on the cover of the New York Times and be the first story on every CNN news show, hands down on repeat. NPR would be covering all of this, MSNBC, it would be constant, non-stop on repeat. This face right here would be on the cover of absolutely everything you see and everything you watch. Every thumbnail from a left-wing YouTuber, this is the face if he was a different color would be on the cover of all of that stuff. But because he's not, because nobody wants to talk about the fact that black nationalism in this country, black supremacy, and black racism is a serious 
issue that we currently have going on. And until we decide to wake up and look at that and be honest about it, that there are evil people on all sides. There are racist people of all skin tones. And until we understand that, we can never truly defeat racism. The word racism in our modern culture has been warped to mean something that is anybody who disagrees with me or who doesn't believe exactly what I do. Well, that's not it. That's not my definition. That's not, well, Oxford definition. I don't know about Webster these days. They changed the definition on a fly. But that's the traditional definition of racism. Believing that a person strictly based on the color of their skin means very specific things about him. Or believing that he is lesser than you. Or that you are lesser than him. Those are racist ideologies. Racism has no place in the United States of America and it has no place in the world. And until we realize racism can be of any race towards any other race, we will never heal this and we will never squash it. So please help me squash this so our children can grow up in Martin Luther King's dream, the Reverend Dr. King's dream of being judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin, no matter what color that is. But hey guys, this is Jesse. That's just my common sense take. This is the common man, Corpus Christi, bringing you news and politics through a common sense lens. Thanks for watching.